Hello, and welcome to episode three of the sexiest podcast (laughs) title ever. This is Badinage. (laughs) I I want everyone to stop and say it with me. I don't care where you are. You could be, you know... (laughs) <laughs> there it is, the special phrase for this podcast. No, but seriously, I don't care if you're in a car alone, if you're at a movie theater catching COVID somewhere in a third world country. I don't care if you're on the bus, if you're on the train, if you're at home alone, you're about to hang yourself. Stop. Take a second and say it. It might cheer you up. Badinage. <laughs> In three, two, one. Badinage. Say it. It's fun. It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> Cheers me up. It's like meditation. You know? You know how they say when you meditate, it, uh, it takes away to the the, uh, the cortisol or however, whatever that is. I don't know. I wasn't a chemistry major. I was an English major, and now, look at me, making a podcast in my parents' basement. That's what an English degree from the University of Toronto gets you. You know what's funny? Um, I don't check LinkedIn very often, but there is, <laughs> I've noticed the few times that I go on there, uh, the University of Toronto Something that they like to do is they take posts made by, like, proud students. Because this is... We're in the Mad Max stages of institutions crumbling. And I think the universities know this. So what they'll do when I sign into the homepage of LinkedIn, there'll be, like, some, you know, some Indian or Pakistani kid. He'll post something about... It was a long journey, but I finally got my doctorate's degree in whatever. And then the University of Toronto, I don't know if they search the, for these posts, but they will find all of these posts and, like, they'll comment on them. Oh, we're so proud of you. This is what you get at our school. That We're so proud of you, blah, blah, blah. It's a bunch of bullshit, guys. Get out the game. I'm telling you right now. As your friend, stop paying money to institute. <laughs> All right, that's not even what I want. How I wanted to start the show. Uh, this is twelve a.m. It's Thursday, December thirty-first. I don't even know if I'm going to put this one out on the same day. Maybe I, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know, it doesn't make sense to put it out in January, now does it? <laughs> so, I the reason why I wanted to record a show, a special episode, tonight, is because last day of the year, I'm going to be talking about predictions for this decade. This is an important, uh, it's going to be an important piece of history, and that's the reason why I'm doing this show. I want to document our times, all right? This is like a public journal. I'm going to say public thoughts, public things, and post them on YouTube. That's what a degree from the University of Toronto gets you. (laughs) Now I have the ability to post on the Internet's public square, YouTube. Thanks, U of T. Thousands of dollars. Thank you. Something I could have done. But <laughs> All right. Um, what was I even talking about? Okay, so this is the third episode. So from the inaugural episode to now, I, I think I've developed a little... I've carved out a little groove here. I've gotten some good feedback. Not... You know, it's not going to be a million views, whatever. I'm not popular, okay? I've accepted this. I accepted this in 2000, 
seven when I was in high school. <laughs> but listen, the whole, I don't know, I don't care. Something I've learned as a as an adult is even if, like, it doesn't matter if you're not popular or not. If you have the opportunity to make at least one human being happy, you should do it. And you know what? There are, it's it's a handful of people listening here. It's not just one. So, if I can make one person happy, that's cool. And you know, I believe in the butterfly effect. I don't know if karma is real, because Jeff Bezos exists and billionaires are on the planet, ruining it. But... I do believe in some kind of butterfly effect. So, you know, if I make someone happy, they might go they might go on to make someone else happy, and then that person goes on to make someone else happy. And before you know it, the whole city of Toronto is just walking around happy. So, turn crappy into happy. That's what I that's what I always say, all right? No, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about here. <clears throat> let me get a let me take a sip of water for you guys. <laughs> all right. So first of all, I want to talk about 2020. This year, as we have seen, shit is just crumbled, okay? Shit's just crumbling. My year, maybe I'll get into that a little bit. Um I was supposed to go to Amsterdam. That nothing. I was supposed to do more stand-up comedy, and instead you have a podcast. So I guess lemons, lemonade, you know, what they say. I was supposed to do more filmmaking. (laughs) Can't do shit there. I wanted to make a remake of one of my favorite movies ever. My Night at Mods. Um, That's not gonna happen. I guess it's a sign. God doesn't want me to make a remake of an already perfect movie. And then, uh, my gramps died uh, from the big casino. Cancer. Not COVID. He was a good guy. Um, you know what? I don't even want to get into that one. Too, too personal. But I love him. I loved him. Past tense now. What a mess this year. All right. I'm going to move on before I start tearing up. Tearing up on the... (laughs) Tearing up on the Audio Technica. Oh, by the way, you know what's funny? This microphone. It's an Audio Technica 2020. So, this podcast is doomed. Pretty much. Because... You know, it's right there. On Every time I sit down and do it, I just, oh gosh, here we go. Something's going to happen. I'm going to fall off my chair. Literally, Audio Technica 2020. I, I'm thinking of getting a new microphone because I'm doomed. <laughs> if that's... <laughs> Seriously, look it up. That's what the mic is called. All right. Um, let's get into this here. What did I... I wanted to talk about predictions for this decade, okay? This is this podcast episode is a time capsule. So maybe I'll look back years from now and giggle. I'll chuckle on my deathbed and I'll say, "Hey, I was wrong about everything. Nothing happened." Or maybe I'll be right, I don't know. Anyway, Uh, first prediction, I think for next year, that's what everyone's looking at. I think this virus, it's, it's not going to go away, like immediately, but I think the vaccine is going to be like a band-aid. It's going to be like a, it's going to slow down shit quite a bit. That that was a Dr. Seuss uh, book that he... (laughs) He never published that one. The vaccine will slow down shit a bit. And then there was a cat in a hat. And then he... Alright. I'm not gonna... 
make fun of the British. Oh, by the way, I noticed two people bought my book recently, Absolute Anhedonia. One person was British, and the other person was American. So, really appreciate that. That was a book that was written in 2015, and five years later, two random strangers across the ends of the world and time bought it, thanks to the internet. Uh, really appreciate it. I know I make a lot of fun about the British and the accents. The British, but I appreciate it. I ap- I appreciate it. Are you having a laugh? <laughs> would you like to, <laughs> would you like to lick my, alright. That's inappropriate. Alright. Yeah, so I don't think the virus is gonna go away next year. Like, Drop of a hat. Poo! It's gone. No, I don't think it's going to happen. What's going to happen is it will slow down and a lot, a bunch of more people are going to die, unfortunately, because that's just what happens with an epidemic. And here's the thing. I think... We are going to see after, like, maybe it might take two years for this shit to to go away or just have some kind of some kind of economic boom. It's we might see a bounce bouncing back in a couple of years, and that's my that's my that's two. Economy will boom for a while. So the 1920s, you know, people keep saying the roaring 20s. When you look back in history, I think a similar thing is going to happen. Maybe. But I think what people are forgetting is that (laughs) there was a 1929, guys. And I don't know if you went to history class with Mr. (laughs) I'm not going to say his name. But, yeah. 1929 happened, guys. All right, so there might be a Roaring Twenties, but I, I'm very bullish on the fact that we're probably gonna see another crash. So 2029, we're, it's gonna, it's all gonna come to shit again. So the third prediction, this, this one, you're not gonna be happy about this. All right, if you're prone to depression and that kind of thing, you might wanna not listen to this one but I do think sorry if you heard gross throat noises there I think there might be another virus uh, in this decade see what's happening a lot of people I don't think people really read what's going on and what's happening right now is global warming is warming <laughs> I'm going to put I'm going to dumb this down for the idiots out there. Global warming is heating up things. Okay, I'm going to stop talking like that. But yes. There will be a thawing out of some kind of virus that exists in soil. There's going to be like, you know like permafrost there's going to be some kind of AIDS that was in like the soil in the 19 or the 1800s some tiger died and he bit a raccoon or some shit I don't know and then he fell down a cliff and then he landed in a ditch somewhere and then he froze and he's just been embedded in the soil for years that's he's going to be thawed out and some guy is going to be hiking somewhere, taking pics for his Instagram because the economy is going to be booming and he's going to be so happy in the year 2025 or some shit. And he is going to create a second epidemic. I I, I think that's going to happen. You see, in 2016, there was this kid. He, this is the, these are the stories the news is not telling you. Okay, I just learned this recently. There was some kid, I think in Russia, he got sick from some similar situation, some animal that 
permafrost aids thawed out. <laughs> and he got it, and he spread it to a whole village of Russian people. And so they they were used to speak like, nyan, 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 nyan. and then when they got it, they just started speaking normal. So, <laughs> all right, that's terrible. So these Russians, they had this virus. And then after they, when they finally got the virus, they started speaking like, hey, how are you? You know what? I don't want a cure. This virus is the cure. <laughs> That's terrible. Sorry. Sorry to all the Russian people out there. Russian girls are hot. I apologize. <laughs> no, but seriously, Russian women, they're beautiful. They got blonde hair. They got eyes that can stab daggers into your soul. Piercing. I like Russian girls. Russian... <laughs> Alright, I'm not gonna get into that. That's a little too much. A little too much info. TMI on the Ruski. The Rush. Okay, alright, number four. I think there will be water shortages. Alright? This... I don't mean to sound like a doomer. I don't mean to sound uh I don't I don't want to offend anyone, but you know what? The earth doesn't care. <laughs> the earth doesn't care about your feelings. What's was that, you know that Ben Shapiro line? Facts don't care about your feelings. Okay, let's say I have let's say I have a house and the house floods, okay? The earth does not care. All right. I'm not going to do that voice anymore. <clears throat> that just drained all my energy. But, yeah. You know what Ben Shapiro's always saying? Facts don't care about your feelings. Well, the Earth does not care about your plans. And I think there will be water shortages at some point this decade. Maybe in the, in the later stages. Because as I mentioned... There will be an economic boom because you can only go up from rock bottom. So there's going to be a boom of some kind. Uh, but, I don't know. At the end of the decade, there will be water shortages and two global powers will fight over this water. It's going to be some kind of world war over water. And... Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, all right? That's just, it's going to happen. I think Mad Max is an actual, it, it, it's gonna. It's starting to look like a documentary. The further we get, <laughs> all right, I don't want to get too dark here. Number five. Okay, this is, this is the big one here, all right? I'm going to use this one to segue into the rest of the show. Because I feel like this is gonna be an uplifting thing for a lot of you for a lot of you fools that got baby ears that are offended that write your little letters. Dear Larry Singleton, last last episode you hurt my feelings. I didn't like it. One bit. <clears throat> Alright. This is a big one. Number five, okay, so just, this is going to be the rest of the show, okay? I'm just going to be talking about this. A lot of businesses won't come back, and more institutions will crumble. So what do I mean by this? Okay, in the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties, what did, what did we get? We had the Jazz Age, all right? That was the big thing, uh those guys had and by the way i just finished watching uh boardwalk empire it's one of my favorite shows i think that might be like the third or fourth time i just finished watching it like all of it again and anyway i don't even know why i brought boardwalk empire up but yes the 1920s they had the jazz age and i think you know how they say history repeats itself? We're going to have a similar thing 
but times 900 bajillion quadrillion. Because we have the internet. And this is what's going to happen. All right. You're going to. You, this virus is going to start to kill a lot of older folks. I don't mean. Don't kill the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm not. I'm not. I don't mean to be. I don't want to make you sad. But it's just. It's going to happen. There's going to be a new energy in this decade. We're going to have our own jazz age. And this the the battle that you're going to start to see is the old culture versus the new culture. The people that belong that are like really invested in the old culture, they don't realize that they've already lost. Listen to that again. They have already lost. They are in a pit of sand. They don't understand that they've lost. Um, I'm going to get into this. All right. What do I mean by old culture? Well, I just mean, I mean, look at it. No one watches TV unless you're like 100 years old. Imagine being one of those people that sits down and watches Ellen DeGeneres or whatever. I don't know. Or like Colbert. I don't, I don't know. Whatever boom, whatever idiots watch. I don't watch. If you're the kind of person that watched Emily in Paris... You're you got a boomer mindset. If you're the kind of person that like sits down and <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't want to offend people, but just I'm just exaggerating to make a point here, okay? There's an old culture versus a new culture, and you're gonna start to see that emerge more and more in the 2020s. <clears throat> There's a fellow by the name of Ben Fritz. He wrote a book called The Big Picture. This book was released in 2016. And for me, at least what I took out of it, I don't know if, you know, I don't know if this is what he was trying to prove. Let me take a sip of water. My voice sounds like poopy. One of the biggest takeaways of The Big Picture by Ben Fritz. Look it up. Take it out from your local library or download it. Do not give any of the establishment more of your money. Steal it if you have. All right, I'm not going to condone that. But you get my point. Read this book. There's a... The the takeaway I got is that celebrity culture is dead. All right? The, The old way... The old system of doing shit, of selling a movie, was that... You have a big star, and that draws crowds to see a movie. Because, you know, I don't know, who's a old star? You know, when Casablanca came out, I don't know, I'm, I'm an idiot. I don't know shit. But I'm sure when that movie came out, people, the, some dude went up to his girlfriend and said, Oh, we gotta, Humphrey Bogart's in this picture. We gotta go see the movie picture, because Humphrey Bogart's in it. It's the 19th, <laughs> whatever and that's how we know what movies are good because Humphrey Bogart is in it. But the way the world works now is that <clears throat> celebrities, they don't matter. And they do stupid shit all the time, as we've seen by, uh, what's her name? Waiting for Godot. The, that's Wonder Woman, bitch. Gal Godot. They're they're stepping on their own toes all the time, and the the wealth disparity is just led to a distrust and a hate, just a overall contempt for these pampered douchebags, rich pricks that do not live our experience. Okay, celebrities don't matter. They're they're just pampered pieces of shit. I'm gl- I- I'm going to be happy to see that go away, to tell you the truth. And listen, the only... Th- this book was published in 2016, so already that was starting to happen in the last decade. Um, You're going to start to see it more in this decade. The only movies that mattered that came out of the studio system and all that shit was just like two or three 
or like I don't know I'm being let's be generous five five movies every year would come out of that and they'd just be people that you already respect you know PTA Tarantino Wes Anderson or something but for the most part Hollywood those movies it they don't matter all right um <clears throat> Yeah, okay, so did I say everything I wanted to say for that? <clears throat> Let me take a sip of water and get back to you beautiful people. Um, The other day, I was... I, I saw this ad that was like... It had Beyonce, and it was like photoshopped. And it had her face on it. But she looked, it didn't look like her. I didn't, I couldn't tell that it was her until I read the side bar of the ad and it said like Beyonce. And I was looking at this ad and I was thinking to myself, who, like, who is this for? This, this isn't a person. This, this shit doesn't look real. This looks like it was made for like someone else that just, you know. You can kind of see this on Twitter, too. A funny thing that you, you can do if you want to see how uh, far this culture has fallen, follow a bunch of people on Twitter. There's two factions of, of people I find on there. There's normies, these people that they are really invested in the old world and they don't understand what's going on. And then there's people like me, and, you know, we just kind of see the world for what it is and kind of laugh at everything. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what else was I going to say, man? There was something important. Oh, yeah. Okay, so if these movies... <clears throat> All right. I had to pause because I had to burp. <laughs> I I didn't want... The microphone to catch up the burp but I think I remembered what I was gonna say is that uh, one note on culture and how it's changing you're gonna start to see this is my, this is a prediction <laughs> I think in this decade if there's more like s- stupid Hollywood produced movies that don't speak to anyone you're gonna start to see shit like uh, COVID inspired movies and like George Floyd protest movies where it's just <laughs> people someone gets covid and they decide to go to a protest and they fall in love he was a guy from the wrong side of town and she had covid they both decided to protest they met each other and you know it's just going to be a hundred movies like that that's what i think is going to happen and these people that produce these movies they have their heads so far up their own assholes that all they can hear is the sound of their own bowel movements and digestion. They don't understand that most people don't want to see that shit. You're going to you're going to probably see some romantic comedy about a George Floyd protest movie. I'm calling it right now, bro. I'm telling you. That's how these people think. They these elites, they don't get that like <laughs> there's a whole segment of the population that's just been locked down forced to be at home forever the last shit we want to see is an epidemic movie so i think it's it's going to be if you are any type of creator or artist buckle up buddy cuz it's going to be the most exciting time to be alive for a person like you. Um, you need to go all in on whatever the hell it is you do. Do not take any of these stupid jobs where, where the economy is going to bounce back. You might start to see a couple goofy-ass jobs, delivery or something, I don't know. But food delivery or, I don't know. But my point is, if you're if you were like on the fence like I was in the 2010s about actually 
accomplishing any type of artistic thing, you the, the fence is just shattered, all right? This is the Mad Max stages. I keep saying that, but it's important to realize. I got to hammer it into the people that are not understanding. How big what is about to happen is. <laughs> I I think this is like this this uh decade, the roaring 20s, it's going to be a wave of uh an a boom of some kind. That you're going to be able to make money, you're going to be able to get bitches, you're going to be able to do whatever the hell it is you got to do. It's going to be it's going to be awesome. But like I said, the caveat, the dick caveat is this it's a short window of time. It's a, it's all going to come crashing down by 2029. So you have a solid couple of years to do whatever the hell it is you got to do, make a name for yourself, become Nucky Thompson. That's that's my goal. My goal for this decade is to get in and then get the hell out. Uh, I want to make enough money to make a bunker so that by the time it all comes crumbling down again, I won't be living with my parents. I will be married to a woman, a beautiful woman that looks like Farrah Fawcett, and maybe uh, get a second wife or a third too. I don't, I don't know. I grew up Muslim, all right? It's, a, it's acceptable. <laughs> I can have a hundred wives if I want. <laughs> um, that's terrible. I shouldn't say that. But this is an entertainment podcast, all right? Don't get upset. Yeah, my goals for this decade, get in and get out. That's the name of the game. I want to get obscenely rich, marry a bitch that looks like Farrah Fawcett, get a golden retriever to keep Jimmy company if he's still alive, and uh, get a couple of kids and get out the game. And by the way, I will be able to have children because... Uh, I'm not taking the vaccine. I'm not going to allow Bill Gates to affect my semen quality, all right? Apparently, the vaccine affects your fertility. And I'm not going to be one of those people. You know what I read? One of those uh, Pfizer things, articles online. I don't know. Maybe it's conspiracy theory bullshit. But it said (laughs) that the disclaimer was... If you are worried about having children in the future, uh, please prepare some jizz on this, like you know, on the side for yourself. They're basically telling you jerk off in a cup and save it, put it in the fridge if you're worried about having kids. You know what? Not me, buddy. I, I, if I find a woman that looks like Farrah Fawcett, you really think I'm gonna jizz in a cup and have a baby? Like a test tube weirdo baby? Hell nah, bro. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. All natural. I'm not going to allow billionaires to ruin my traditions. I'm having kids. I'm getting married. I'm going to get in and out the game and in and out my wife. <laughs> that's terrible. Um, I think that's all I had to say. So, yeah. Good luck to you guys. Happy New Year. Keep you lit on straight, dog. Uh, You know, exercise. Take care of yourselves. Drink water. I don't know if you guys have any New Year's resolutions. My New Year's resolutions, aside from my goals that I just told you, um, I want to quit eating fried foods. I don't do drugs. I don't drink alcohol or smoke or any of that stupid shit. So I don't have anything to worry about there. But I do have a problem eating fried foods. You know what I noticed this year? This is a crazy thing. First year in my life that this happened to me. I am a big fan of the filet fish at McDonald's. (laughs) Some of you might think that's disgusting. 
I don't really care. I've had white people that say I'm gross for liking filet fish I don't care. You can suck my dick. It tastes really great. But my point is, this is the first year. I don't know if it has anything to do with COVID or the atmosphere, what's global warming or what's going on there, but I ate, I tried it on two separate occasions, okay? I ate the filet fish on two separate occasions, and I got an allergic reaction both times. So, I think it's a great time to give all that shit up and just eat healthy because, I don't know, I don't know what these billionaires are putting into the food supply. They're, they're doing something, all right? I I have never felt this way before when I was eating that shit, so some something's up. Aside from that, I don't know, what other New Year's resolutions did I have? I, I, I don't know. I think I'm awesome already. <laughs> I just want to be rich so that I can buy... Uh, buy whores. No, I'm kidding. That's terrible. All right. See you guys in the new year. And when the water shortages start, if I made you laugh or entertained you even once... Uh... <laughs> Please save a bottle of water for your old pal, Larry Singleton.